How have you been? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all. We love you. We thank God. We bless the Lord to be back. This is Bamboo Presents Erica Mukisa's Testimony of Witchcraft and Deliverance, Part 5. And uh, we just bless the Lord. We thank God for every last one of you and for everyone who has been uh, tuning in. And we just bless the Lord. And we pray for all of you. I want you to know that we pray for every last one of you. There is none of you that we do not pray for. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we even begin, you know, I just want to start with a word Jordan. of prayer so that the Lord can be exalted in all of these things. Mm -hmm. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful, glorious day. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, that we have reached this far in 2020, yes. that you have protected us and you have shown yourself ever faithful mm -hmm. and ever gracious. And you have preserved us from the evil that is in the world. Mm -hmm. For indeed there is great evil in the world. But you have preserved us, your children. You have kept us. You have helped us. You have healed us. You have safeguarded us on every side. And now as we reveal this truth, have the preeminence. Holy Spirit, use these vessels of clay to yes. bring forth your word. For he that speaks truth shows forth righteousness. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, let your people be covered in the precious blood of Jesus, that this message may go out to all and that no interruption and no evil, let no evil befall them, neither any plague come near their dwelling, let them be safe and secure on every side. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the angel of the Lord and camps round about those that fear him and the Lord delivers them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Lord, as this video continues, let your people be blessed, let your people be inspired, encouraged, mm -hmm. and emboldened to live a life for you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Hi, viewers. I really want to take this opportunity to thank you for your messages. We thank you for uh, commenting, for liking. We thank you for sharing these uh, messages. We thank you for encouraging us. We thank you for standing with us in prayer. Uh, those of you that have uh, stood with us financially, we also want to take this opportunity to thank you. And uh, Happy New Year. Uh, also, uh, I want to just uh, announce that uh, in, in the next two weeks, we won't be around. We won't be at uh, Father's House Family Church. We are traveling to Nigeria uh, for two weeks. We'll be back on 18th February 2020. So um, our friends in Nigeria will be in Enugu. Enugu, which university? Um, we'll be in Enugu. We are going to minister from um, from fourth to ninth at uh, Princess Alexandra Auditorium. So you're welcome to join us. We are we are ministering together with the Glory Wave. So. Um, I really want to thank you. I thank God for the gift of life. I thank God for protecting us. I thank God for the divine health, divine protection. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really been the hand of God. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm continuing in my testimony of how I got delivered. You know, uh, the kingdom of darkness, it's very easy to join, but it's difficult to mm -hmm. get out of the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. One, because the enemy knows that you know so much of his secrets. So the first thing that will come into his mind is to kill. Because the Bible says that he came to steal, kill, and to destroy. John 10, 10. Yes, but uh, Jesus came that we may have life and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a struggle for me. But you know, one of the things that helped me to overcome uh, through what, what, what the challenges that I, I went through was my mother because my mother had covenanted me to God. She had entered into a covenant with God and she wanted me to serve God. She wanted my little brother to serve God and she was prayerful. She was committed in ministry. So even when the enemy tried to take me into the kingdom of darkness, the covenant that my mother entered in with God saved me from all that trouble that I had put myself in or that the enemy had put me in because uh, my grandmother also contributed so much to my initiation and some of my relatives 
I'm telling you, it's like almost everyone who could bewitch, bewitched me. But <laughs> up to now, when I look at where I'm coming from and where I am right now, really, if it, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be alive. Mm. But because God has allowed me to live, I have decided to serve my purpose. And really, my purpose is serving God. Because uh, I would have chosen maybe after my education to go get a job and start working and, you know, live my life like other people who get delivered and they decide to keep quiet. But I decided to help other people. And really, we have seen God delivering people through our ministry. Uh, I, I have some girls that I believe in future, they will come and share their experiences. Mm -hmm. They were into sorcery. They were devil worshippers. Uh, they were initiated in schools. And we are always talking to parents and telling uh, parents to train their children the ways of God. So that they'll be able to resist the enemy. They'll be able to pray for themselves. You know, uh, one of them was initiated through food. You know, a student would bring food from her mother. And her, her da 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 dad to that student was a sorcerer. So they would bring food to her. And she started eating this food. She didn't know that there was witchcraft. So as she continued to eat the food... She started getting out of her body in the night. For her, she thought she was dreaming. But what was actually happening to her was she was astral projecting. And then she went to a river, uh, a, a river in, here in Kenya. And, uh, and then she connected and traveled to the Indian Ocean where she met the Queen Mother. And the Queen Mother started training her on how to become so terrible. And, uh, and how to destroy her family and how to become rebellious, you know. But her mother was also praying. So mothers, your prayers are so much important. Even when your children are rebelling against you, even if there is no connection between you and your son or daughter, you don't have to help the enemy by cursing them. Instead, you need to pray for your children. What saved this little girl is the prayers of her mother. And it is through these videos that we share that she saw me and then she came and I'm standing with her. And I know she, she uh, her first time to testify was last Sunday. She testified at church. So I'm guiding her, mentoring her. I want her to, to be able to stand on her own and ashamed the enemy to the glory of God. Another girl was also initiated through school. She was also in school. She was a scripture union leader born in a christian family raised by christian parents but you know the bible says he's a thief the devil is a thief he doesn't come through the right door so some uh some students went to her like they needed help they needed to be you know delivered they confessed that they were devil worshippers and this girl didn't know how to pray for satanists she didn't know so and she also didn't know that they can also be on a mission to initiate her and you know the enemy is patient. So this girl uh, begins to, for her in her mind, she thought that by, by loving them, by showing them kindness, she was ministering. She didn't know that forces she was fighting with. And, uh, and uh, these girls uh, kept on following her. When she got out of school, of primary, as she was going to secondary, she, she lost uh, con connection with the people she was praying with. And uh, she started now, uh, she, she became reluctant. She could no longer pray, no longer read the Bible like she used to. And that's how the enemy came into her life. Uh, how she was initiated, she saw these girls, I think they fed her with a snake in a dream. You know, she used to dream things chasing her and in the dream. And she would go tell her mother, mommy, things are chasing me in the dream. And her mother didn't know. You know what these dreams meant so she was like uh if they chase you in a dream make sure they don't get you she didn't know that life was spiritual like some other believers you know you wake up one morning you go to church on sunday pastor preaches you come back home you put your bible on the table you watch tv you know you, ha you, you don't know spiritual things you don't want to pay attention to spiritual things you want pastor to preach what you want to hear uh, you travel nations, you say, I receive, you do, but when they go into the word, 
you feel bored. You know, there are some Christians who are like that. They take life so lightly. So this girl, uh, she, she took her life so lightly. She didn't know that the enemy was after her. And in a dream, she was fed with a snake. And that was the beginning of her trouble. This girl, gave, uh, she conceived even when she was a virgin. Because demons would come and sleep with her. So, she, for her, she thought it was uh, a dream, you know. Uh, she says giants. She could not see the heads. Things would come and sleep with her. They would torment her. Then one day she dreamt she was giving a baby to, to the mummy water. And then uh, as she's giving her baby to mummy water, uh, shortly after she got involved in a relationship with a man, but they did not even go intimate to an extent of a uh, lady conceiving. They did not, in other words, they did not even have sex. But uh, to cut the story short, she conceived and she got confused. She's like, how, how did it happen? I'm talking about a lab technician with a doctor. I, I thank God <laughs> this girl is a lab technician. I thank God. Her, her boyfriend was a medical worker. She was, he was a doctor. So we are talking about spiritual things. Some people don't understand that life is spiritual. So she gets confused. She, uh, she decides to accept the fact that she is pregnant. The, the boyfriend decided to stand with her. And uh, three months later, uh, she, she, because of the stress, she spoke words. You know, you have to be careful with the words that you speak. You have to be very careful with the words that you speak because the enemy holds on to those words. Our enemy, the, the devil, holds on to the words that we speak. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the blind say, I can see. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because God wants us to speak his mind, his purpose, and his will for our lives. But most of the time, when people don't have money, and, and uh, they are, they are uh, talking about their situation, they'll say, I am broke. I am so, so poor nowadays. They don't know that the enemy is going to stand on those words, and he will use those words against them. Because the enemy, the Bible says, our, our enemy, the devil, is the accuser of all brethren. So he will stand on that and he'll say, you know, she confessed that she's poor. You know, because your, your words create, you're created in the image of God. Even when your child is performing poorly in class, you do not have to, to say that you are stupid. You know, I knew it. You're always the last in class. You'll never make it in class. As you keep on saying those negative words eventually they happen i've seen uh, in the deliverance uh we've been having with people different people there is one girl one particular girl who came to me and she said please help me i don't even know how i made it to church i am being disturbed by a spirit of fear and she was not even looking at me she could not look at me straight in the eye she was even panicking when she's talking when she was talking to me and I asked her, how did this begin? It began with my dad. I used to perform poorly in class and he would always say I was stupid. I would never make it and all that. And this thing entered the girl's spirit. The words entered the girl's spirit. And the girl knew that she was useless. She would never make it in life. She, she knew that she, she could not amount to anything good. So when she, when she went to... When she, uh, when she went to higher uh, secondary, upper secondary, uh, she, 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 she used to be so fearful. And you know, the enemy is also bad. He brought some uh, weird skin rash on her. And this girl hated herself. She, she, was, she had no esteem. You know, she had no self-esteem. So when she got, she got to university, by the way she passed, it's by the grace of God. She went to university, and when she went to university, when decent men tried to approach her for marriage, she could not allow them to, you know, she, she could not uh, give them an opportunity because she felt she did not deserve any good man for marriage. So eventually, she ended up entering into a relationship with a very old man. Uh, she says that the man was ugly. 
So uh, I know God has not created any ugly person, but according to the girl, the girl said that the man was not presentable, the man was ugly. So she was keeping that relationship a secret. But because the devil is bad, the devil caused a fellow student to find her with her <laughs> ugly man, you know, and the student spread the news in, in university and she felt uncomfortable. She says that was the end of that relationship and she felt what they call hell on earth. You know, students were gossiping, they were saying she's, uh, she's not normal, she's, she's an old mama, yet she's just a young girl. But you know, that's what the enemy does in people's lives. And uh, when she went to, after her university, she got a job. And when she gets a job, because there are so many people, she was working in a bank. Because there were so many people, she could not stand uh, being uh, surrounded by many people. So she resigned. And this was a good job. This girl resigned. So I'm telling you, life is spiritual. So now she came to me and she was like, I just resigned from my place of work because I, I, I don't, I'm not used to being around people. So we are talking about things that are happening in real life and we want to help you, you know. You need to stand, you need to pray, you need to be watchful of the things that you listen to, you need to be watchful of the words that you speak, the words that you say, you declare over your children. You need to be very careful because the enemy is, the enemy is so bad, you know, he will look for any loophole, anything that he can use against you. And I was talking also about, I'm going to uh, continue with my deliverance, but I want to talk about covenants, you know. A covenant is an agreement made between two people, but with a witness of, of uh, either it has to be a spiritual, there has to be a spiritual witness. It has to be God or Satan. You know, there are two kingdoms that we are fighting against. The king, uh, there, 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 there is one kingdom that we are fighting against. We are fighting against the kingdom of darkness. So if you're in the kingdom of God, then you're against the kingdom of darkness. And everything you do as a child of God, of, uh, in line with covenant, God remembers. So, for example, when we were wedding, we exchanged vows. That was a covenant that we made, you know. To, to keep each other, to love each other, to protect each other. And God was the witness. So now it is up to me to keep that covenant or to break it. But when I break it, there are consequences. So uh, even in the kingdom of darkness, there are some people that are being tormented because uh, their parents entered into covenants. Their grandparents entered into covenants. And now these people gave their lives to Christ and they have broken the covenant, but they don't know that there was a covenant. So they are dealing with things and they think it is witchcraft. Because at least witchcraft is something that any, anyone can quickly think about. Why is it that everything I'm doing is not working out? Why is it that everyone in our family is not married? How comes, you know, we are struggling financially, we are all educated, but we don't have a job. Try to find out Things that are happening in your family. Is there any covenant perhaps? Is there anything that is hindering you from moving on because you're a child of God? And as a child of God, you're entitled to walk in the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, you're blessed beyond a curse. So, if you see a situation whereby, you know, you're stagnant, you're going backward, things are not happening... You're being frustrated, broken relationships, not one, not two, like about six relationships gone. Then just understand that this is a spiritual thing. It, it, it may not be witchcraft. Sometimes there are covenants in a family that you're dealing with. How comes everyone in the family is dying of cancer? Everyone in the family? Mm. Fibroids. Everyone in the family, every guy in the family has fibroids. That is something that, you, that needs to be dealt with. There has to be a reason as to why something is happening. Mm. So sometimes, some people say this is a family disease. There's nothing like a family disease. Let me tell you, you have to decide to cut yourself off from those covenants that are following in your family. Mm. 
-hmm. You say, you stand your ground and you say whether everyone in our family is dying from sickle cells. I am not going to die from sickle cells and my children will not be sicklers. You pray against it and you deal with anything that is associated with it, whether it is witchcraft, whether they are covenants, you deal with them. Because life is spiritual. We keep on reminding you, you always have to have it at the back of, or at the back of your mind that life is spiritual. There is a, a lady who brought her son. He had uh, sickle cells and he was supposed to go for, for that. Uh, for, he was supposed to go to India. They had to, uh, they are sad, you know, there are fluids in the knee mm -hmm. that they had to, uh, try, like, get from another another baby the same age mm -hmm. and then go to India for that operation. It was very costly. It was very expensive. You know, they prayed for that. Uh, the baby, nothing is happening. The baby is not moving. And uh, he's still in pain. They were carrying him. The baby cannot move. He cannot sit. He cannot support himself. He's in pain. Then they had to call the mother. Mm -hmm. So when the mother came, we began to pray for the mother. And when the mother would vomit, the baby would also vomit. When the mother would cough, the baby would also cough. Mm -hmm. When the mother would scream, the baby would also scream at the same time. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the delivery session, they were all walking. Mm -hmm. They were all walking. The baby never had to go to India. For any any uh, any operations, he never had to. All that money was saved. But why? We found that in their family, they were all sicklers. In the lady's uh, family, they were all having the same thing, you know. And she, that was the only child she had because the others had died of the same sickness. So there is hope. Once you know what you're dealing with, now you begin to work with knowledge. The Bible says that my people perish due to lack of knowledge but you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free yes so we have seen cases like that and we know what we are talking about we know that there are people who are suffering from covenants last time we were talking about witchcraft and how they switch destinies today we are talking about covenants because we know that some people are trying so hard in their strength. They are trying to, to, to make ends meet. They are trying to apply for jobs. They are trying to work here and there. There are some things, if you don't deal with them, my dear, you will be going in round circles, round circles. You're trying, you go overseas, you, may, you think that maybe in Kenya things are not working. Maybe in Uganda things are not working. Let me go to America. Even if you go to America and you have not dealt with covenants, my dear, mm -hmm. hey, those covenants can bring you back to square one. Mm -hmm. I've seen people coming to me, they, they just get deported. No reason. Oh, there's lots of homeless people in America also. Yes. Lots of broken, poor people in America, anywhere, anywhere, Europe, the same. Someone has worked on their green card and when they're about to issue it, just one document disappears. And you think that is normal? That's not normal. And then the person is brought back again to square one. And now you have to begin to work on uh, the, those documents again. And sometimes you have to first go back to your country and then again start afresh from square one. And even when you're starting now, the process is even slower than before. Just know that you need to deal with things spiritually. And then you'll be able to have a breakthrough. Someone was asking me, the difference between fallen angels, demons, and spirits. And I'm going to get to that also because I, uh, at the end, I also want to tell you how God delivered me because we serve a powerful God. You know, I've, I've been sharing my testimony and I'll continue to share my testimony. But today I want to show you the power that God has. I want to encourage someone who's going through what I went through. I want you to know that these curses, Covenants, witchcraft can be dealt with through the word of God and through Jesus. Because Jesus, uh, Jesus shed his blood for us. He defeated the kingdom of darkness and he got all the keys that the enemy had, all the power that he had, and mm -hmm. he transferred it to us. And he said, all power in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. Therefore, go into the world preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick, and cast out devils. Mm -hmm. And some people are still bound 
because they have not renewed their mind with the word of God. Mm -hmm. You can pray for someone and you believe this person is delivered. All they need to do is to go and, and you know, renew their mind with the word of God. And the person comes back to you. I feel I'm not delivered. I feel the devil still has my soul. When you feel the person is delivered. <laughs> but you know what is lacking is renewing our mind with the word of God. Because the enemy has brought so many things to divert us, you know, from reading the word of God. He knows the word of God is the only weapon that we were given against the kingdom of darkness. It's the only way to deprogram, to remove all those negative words that have been spoken against you. You know, those words that people say against you, the words that you don't agree with, it's very important that immediately you say, I refuse that, I reject that in Jesus' name. If someone says, you, I know you, you cannot make it. You are just a fool. You say, I refuse and reject that in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. When someone says, you, you're always the last to come. You say, no. Mm -hmm. The word of God says, I am the head and not the tail. I am the first and not the last. If you just accept every word that is being spoken about, if you just take it in. When someone says that you are, you're, you're, you're a fool, you are stupid, don't. Don't receive those words. In fact, if at all they try to enter, let them get out through this other side. Don't mm -hmm. meditate on those bad words. So, someone can come to, to, like, you know, we have deliverance uh, at Father's House Family Church in Nairobi, Riru, opposite the sub-county hospital. But we won't be around uh, for, for these two weeks until 18 uh, February. We also have deliverance. On 21st February, when we return from Nigeria, we have a deliverance uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, it will begin from exactly 2 p.m. to where the Holy Spirit will lead us to, to, to end because we want to pray for people. So just mark the date, 21st uh, February, it will be a Friday mm -hmm. from 2. Just come as you are. Don't bring, uh, you know, some people ask me, how much money do you want for our deliverance? For us, we pray for you free of charge just come with an open heart come with the bible we shall pray for you we shall guide you if you feel like you need to stand with the ministry we also allow you to stand with the ministry but we are not charging any money to enter we are not charging any money for anything just come we shall stand with you in prayer so many many times you know people are dealing with things that they don't understand they are dealing with covenants the things are just happening in their lives, but they, they don't get it. They don't understand. You have to renew your mind with the word of God because what is happening is the programs that you're watching on TV, they're actually programs because they program your life. If you're watching Alhandra and Alhandras, your life is going to be full of Alhandras because they are programming your life. So for us, we, we don't even have time for TV. We don't even want TV in our house. We don't even have a TV in our house because we know those are TV programs. If at all we are to associate ourselves with on TV, we have to be the ones on TV. So you have to program yourself like that. You say, I have to be with knowledge to give people so that I'll be able to go on TV and program people the right way. Because, you know, you can either serve the kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness. The people that are uh, serving, the, uh, the people that are working for money without putting God first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So the people that are putting money before God are working for the kingdom of darkness and they don't know. So they will do everything possible to get to the limelight, to be seen on TV. They will do everything possible to become famous. They will even sell their souls to get fans, to get following, to get viewers, to get, they will use witchcraft to pull people and hook them onto their programs. That's why you see most of these programs that begin, begin with satanic symbols, a snake, a serpent. They begin showing you uh, stars falling in the river. You know, they are telling you that they are exchanging destinies. They are switching your, your destiny on TV and your eyes are glued there. 
Your children are getting rebellious. You don't know where the rebellion is coming from. They are being programmed to be rebellious. Mm. The children are becoming sorcerers at, tender, at a tender age. I've met, there is a boy that they brought at church. The boy is in trouble. You know, he's, he's eating clothes. Clothes he eats and he swallows. Another one I prayed for, he, he was eating bricks. Every day he would eat a brick. And you, someone would say, no, this thing can't happen. A man brought his wife. The wife was eating mattresses. Mm. I've seen, you know, things, you know, we are talking about things that we are dealing with every day. Another one was eating papers. I, I prayed for a, a, a lady who was a devil worshiper. She was eating these ants, the black ants that those ones, and butterflies. And imagine how poisonous a butterfly is. But she was not dying. Because she was bound. She was causing accidents. Even when they were bringing her to church, vehicles were overturning. So we know that life is spiritual. Now people are watching people that you don't know on TV. They are pro Now you're wondering why this generation is going the opposite way, the opposite direction. Bad is good and good is bad. You know, you're wondering why things are like that. It was programmed in Hollywood. You know, they began by showing us that uh, short skirts, uh, short dresses, uh, revealing clothes were the best. So now, you find this generation, that's what they consider good. And if you see them in church, in the power pit, they are singing, they are half naked, and they don't feel anything, that's what they have been programmed to be. And when you see them hooked on drugs, when you see the youth hooked on drugs, when you see them hooked on alcohol, when you see them addicted, now the re rehabilitation centers are so full with so many youth. Actually, um, uh, drugs and uh, drugs are a part of sorcery, okay? Uh, the root word for drugs is pharmakia, and that pharmakia word has its roots in sorcery, okay? By taking the pill, and when you take the pill, it augments your mind. So that it is able to now um, to participate in more spiritual matters illegally, okay? And that's witchcraft because witchcraft is counterfeit spiritual authority. So that's why, you know, people love to pop ecstasy pills. And when you take an ecstasy pill, suddenly you are more aware of the spirit realm around you. And, and, the, and the music comes more alive and everything comes alive around you. And you're like, whoa. You're having this, you think you're just having this trip, but no, your mind is being augmented so that you can uh, you interact. You're actually feeling more of the spirit realm around you. That's why a slight touch, you can feel it with such, with such, you know, feeling. Yeah. yeah so. And you know, the, what the enemy does, he, these people that have sold their souls to the devil, he, he, mark, like he makes them look like they have it all. But they will not show you that these people actually don't sleep at all in the mm -hmm. night. He will not show you that these people are being tormented by demons. He will not show you that demons are actually sleeping with them in the night. Mm -hmm. He will not show you that these people don't even eat food. Mm -hmm. He will not show you all that. What he will show you on TV is them wearing diamonds and gold and silver, white, uh, luxurious vehicles. He will, he will show you all that but he will not show you what is happening behind the scenes. He will not show you when they are being sodomized and, and being covenanted and brought into the brotherhood. Actually, he somebody, not show somebody, you asked, somebody asked, how do they sell their soul? Well, you sell your soul through compromise of your integrity, okay? Every time you compromise your integrity, you lose a portion of your soul. Now, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So, and it's your spiritual body, really. You, you are your soul and your soul is you, okay? Because when you die, the spirit goes back to God who gave it, but your soul either goes to heaven or hell. And that means your soul is you, mm -hmm. all right? So, when you compromise your integrity, you lose a portion of your soul. That means when you compromise your integrity, you lose a portion of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now, just think about that for a minute. And then understand why Britney Spears is going crazy, mm -hmm. pulling out her hair, yeah. shaving her head, and going crazy in Hollywood. Why? Because these guys are Satanists, okay? They lost their souls. And once, once Satan gets a hold of your soul, he will not give it back under any circumstances unless there are some praying people around them. Family members praying continuously. I mean, it takes the real intervention of God. 
I mean, a whole church was fasting for 40 days before Erica got delivered. Now, just think about the 40 days of fasting before one person gets delivered, one Satanist to get delivered, 40 days of fasting. But then she was a deep Satanist, okay? A third generation, going on the fourth generation of sorcery. I'm not talking about witchcraft. Witchcraft is small time. I'm talking about sorcery. Sorcerers rule over witches. Now, so, see what is happening. They are coming to Africa, hmm. and, and they are uh, going to orphanages. And they're adopting these kids. Oh. And when they take these kids, these celebrities are adopting black kids. Mm. They are taking them there for rituals. Yes. They are taking them there to be initiated. Mm -hmm. They are taking them there to work as slaves in the kingdom of darkness. Those are the kids they are sodomizing and molesting. I'm telling you the truth. These things are happening in those in those big companies, Hollywood. Hollywood, Hollywood is a pedophilia circle. Pedophilia, child murder, molestation, sodomy, uh, prostitution is a large prostitution ring. Let no man deceive you, okay? Uh, yeah, and then you see a boy is being dressed like a girl. These are the children that have been adopted from Africa. A boy is being dressed like a girl and then you think that's normal? And they are showing it, you know, on TV. They are programming this little gener this young generation. That's what the kids are watching. Now, the kids nowadays, the next generation after us, most of them have been programmed to be gay. And what is happening is these people who own international schools, if it is not a Christian international school, these people that own international schools, most of them are siding with the gay people and the gay people are, are funding these schools and these schools are teaching kids that it's okay to be, it's okay to sleep with a man when you're a man, or it's okay to fall in love with a girl when you're a girl. So you see, and that's, and hold on, let's have a, a short word from our sponsor here. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, this is Second Corinthians chapter 4, from verse, uh, verse 3 and 4, but if our gospel is hid, what, if what we're telling you about is hidden, then it is hid to them that are lost. In other words, the whole the world that is under Lucifer that have not given their life to Christ, they are lost. In whom the God of this world, who is Lucifer, Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So you see, they are blinded by it. That's why they're, 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 st they're starting with a false light, okay? Satan, Lucifer, is the light bearer, okay? That's what his name means. Light was supposed to be the knowledge of God. He was supposed to bear the knowledge of God, but then he became a deceiver. So now he bears false light. That's why they're teaching these children from an early age how to be homosexuals. So that when they're 18 and they're telling them that is bad, they will have already been programmed. Yeah, they'll be saying money is bad. Yeah, money is bad. They'll be saying that you are evil and that they are good. Okay, yes. so now up is down, down is up. The whole world is, is, is going, without this book, the whole world goes crazy. And now what the enemy has done, he's making the parents to be so busy. Some parents go very early and the children are left with the housemates. Mm -hmm. And then they come back very late and the kids are sleeping. And then the housemates, some of them who are not saved, some of them are devil worshippers. Let me tell you, some of them are devil worshippers. I've interacted with people that have told me they were abused sexually by these maids. So now you go very early, you leave your child asleep. Then you come back very late, the children are sleeping. What happens during that time, you don't know. At, at home, the housemaids are taking advantage of them. In schools, they are teaching them that to be gay is good. Then one weekend, you're at home, you find your child is sodomizing the baby brother. Mm -hmm. And then you're shocked. You're like, hey, someone is bewitching us. No, it's not witchcraft. It is programming. What they are doing is they are programming your children they are programming the next generation to be what they want them to be. Mm -hmm. Whatever we were, we were programmed. Whatever you were, you were programmed. Let me tell you, what is happening in our generation, when our parents look at us, they get shocked. Mm -hmm. And even us, what is happening in the next generation, when we look at them, we get shocked. But what is happening is the TV. So... Do you even mind to pay attention to what your kids are watching or are they watching Coco? If you allow them to be raised by Coco, that uh, cartoon, 
Coco. Coco is a Walt Disney cartoon. Yes, if you allow them to be raised by Coco, then you're going to raise professional and experienced sorcerers. Look, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay, so you have to train them early, train them in the scriptures, train them to memorize scriptures early. And also, once you put these cartoons in front of your kids, skip forward through the cartoon because they start putting the witchcraft and the sorcery like an hour or 45 minutes into the cartoon. So you have to skip forward to make sure that what you what they're watching is is good. Otherwise, they will start with something very innocent at the beginning. First 20, 35 minutes, real innocent. But it starts getting real dark 35, 45 minutes into the cartoon. So you have to watch. You have to you have to investigate everything. In fact, you're supposed to act as an officer. You are no longer civilians. I, I, and this, this, this is the thing. Christians, a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is not a civilian. You are not civilians. You are soldiers, okay? You are agents. Just like the U.S. has CIA agents. If they send them to Russia on a mission, how is that CIA agent supposed to operate? How should he live? How should he conduct himself? He has to be very careful. That's why the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, is searching, seeking whom he may devour, whom he may make a fool of, whom he may strip and destroy their destiny. So live like a soldier, live like an agent. And the most unfortunate bit is that when these kids go to church on Sunday, you'll find dolls and swings. So when the parents are praying, the kids have been trained to play. So when they get 18, the parents want them to be actively involved in ministry. And they have not trained them to be in church on Sunday. These kids know on Sunday I go to swing. I go to play with dogs. Look, as parents, don't send your schools, don't send your children to schools where they are not being taught God's word, okay? Look, you can decide what your child wants to be. The Bible says children are like arrows, so the parents send the arrow wherever they want it to go. So if your child is not being taught that God created heaven and the earth and created humanity, then your child is being taught evolution. If your child is being taught evolution, that means they're being pulled away from God mm -hmm. to become Luciferians. Mm -hmm. All right. So homeschool. That's why it's so important that you do your own businesses. That's why it's so important that you be financially stable and wise. OK, because. <clears throat> Otherwise, you'll be forced to send your kids to the public school where the taxpayer is paying and they're being taught that there is no God. That is terrible. You know, the most uh, surprising thing is that these celebrities that you see going naked on TV, they don't allow their kids to watch TV because they know what they are doing. If you interview them and ask them, do your kids watch TV? They'll say no. Why? They know what they are doing is bad mm -hmm. because they have sold their soul. And they don't want their kids to follow that, whatever they are doing. So they are programming your kids. Mm -hmm. They have taken money and they are selling your kids into slavery, into bondage. And you, you're supporting them. You're shouting, this is my celebrity. This mm -hmm. is my star. This is my role model. This is my mentor. You know, but these people, they also know, even much as they have sold their souls to the devil, they know that what they are doing is bad. Mm -hmm. So they don't want their kids to do what they are doing. If what they are doing is good, they would be taking their kids to club to sit in the front row while they go naked for the world. They would be doing that. But they don't want their kids to do what they are doing. You know? So you have to be wise. You know? Now what happened to me uh, when I was getting delivered is I was dealing with covenants. I was also dealing with witchcraft. I was also dealing with forces that I never understood. Because now I had escaped from the kingdom of darkness. And the enemy knew that I had information that I was going to reveal to, to people. And his kingdom would be exposed because the power of sin is in its secrecy. That's why they work uh, under, you know, secret society. You know, they have secrets. You know, when I was growing up, there are some things I would see, but I, I never took them to be serious. You know, I had a friend. She, she would also make me confess things that I don't understand. Like, you, she had a magic stick. We would go play hide and seek. And this girl had a magic stick. And she would speak over that stick and say, you magic stick, 
gave me power in Congo, in Nigeria, up to Uganda. I didn't know. And we would say those things. And when we, in the moment we would say those words, uh, the, the other kids that were looking for us would not see us. We would be invisible. You know, I didn't know that I was being initiated. But later, when I got initiated, I got to realize that that girl was also an agent, you know, that the enemy had brought in my life. So be watchful uh, over the friends that your kids have. What are they saying when they go to play? You know, at least keep an ear. Try to pay attention to them because sometimes mm -hmm. some kids are not what they look like they are. Some act like they are innocent, yet they are devils because they have been initiated. And let me tell you, some, some kids are not 100% human beings. Absolutely. Let me tell you, there are some children that are working on satanic covenants, they were gotten from shrines. The parents went to the devil for these children. So they have these people who look like they are normal, but they are not normal. They are acting like a child, acting like, like uh, an adult, you know? Mm -hmm. They act like adults. And you know, when the world looks at these people, these children, they, they put them in the limelight and they say, wow, this kid is so brave. This kid is so brilliant. Well, they call him a child phenomenon, you know? Yes. Well, this child is like four or five years old and they play piano like a professional. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And they're just like, wow, she's a child genius. Nonsense. Not every child you see is 100% human. And we see that in, in Genesis chapter 6. It says from verse 1, and it came to pass... When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, now the sons of God there in Hebrew is Benai Elohim. So the Benai Elohim were the fallen, the Benai Elohim were fallen angels. You need to understand that. The, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Okay? Then skip down to verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. Okay? So you understand now where the giants come from. They were really, they were real giants. We used to hear about mythological giants saying, you know, fee, fi, fo, fum. You remember those, those nursery school um, um, stories? But the Bible is saying that there were giants. So there were really giants. There were 14, 15, 20 feet tall human beings, okay? Because the giants were in the earth in those days and also after that. So this is the days of Noah and also after the flood. So before the flood and after the flood, this these hybrids existed, okay? So, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the saying became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. That means that they were the famous warriors. They were, that's Hercules that you hear about. These, these, um, um, uh, Greek mythology, Greek mythological figures that you hear about, the, the heroes of war, Achilles. That's where we get the, the term Achilles heel. That's how Achilles was killed. He was, he was, he, they hit him with an arrow in his, in his heel. But anyway, those are the children that were hybrid. So we're telling you that there are human beings that are not 100% human. I'm trying mm -hmm. to tell you there are beings in the earth. And that's why Jesus spoke about Matthew. In Matthew 13, he's talking about the parable of the tares. He's talking about the children of the wicked one. My God, you listen, we follow our father because we are saved. We are born again. We are the children of God. We follow our father. And they follow their father, who is Lucifer. Jesus identified them and said, you of your father, that devil. Jesus spoke to them directly in the temple. He was, he was in Jerusalem speaking them, to them, the Jews, directly. He told them, these, these Edomite Jews, Edomite Roman Jews like Herod, these guys, he told them straight to their face. He told them, you are of your father, the devil. Jesus was telling them straight up. That's why I love Jesus. John Jesus, the man, Jesus was bold, man. Jesus was not afraid. He told them straight to their faces, you are of your father, the devil. Mm. He was a murderer from the beginning. He, when he speaks a lie, he speaks his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. Mm. So if Jesus is saying straight up that there are children of the devil that live in this world, that are, have physical bodies, that, and many of whom are famous. John the Baptist also identified them. He said, you children of serpents. You children of serpents. He was not beating around the bush. He was not just saying, you, guys, you, you sinners. Nah, Jesus came to save sinners. But he's not talking about these children of the wicked one. He's not talking about that. Those children of the wicked one can never be saved. And I'll tell you why they'll never be saved. Because they never, they'll never accept the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, uh, surprisingly, they, they look like us, you know. They, they talk like us. They mm -hmm. even join church, you know. Mm -hmm. They are in choir. Mm -hmm. There is one that we prayed for. We found out that he had slept with all, everyone in choir. 
and he had also impregnated the pastor's daughter. He had impregnated the girls in choir, including the pastor's daughter. And the pastor's daughter was just 11 years. You know, this boy just came to church like he was, um, if he was needy, he had nowhere to sleep. Then the pastor took him in. And before, uh, because he was gifted, he would play the instruments, he would play the keyboard, the, the guitar. He was training choir. Pastor felt like he would be a part of the ministry. He took him in as a son. By the time pastor realized the boy had impregnated the choir members and also the pastor's daughter, how pastor found out is when the daughter was pregnant and when they beat the daughter to, you know, force her speak who had, who was responsible. Who's responsible? Pastor finds out that it is the boy. This is an 11 year old that has been impregnated, you know, by a devil, devil's agent. You know, I'm talking about things that are even happening in church. So when you go to church, just bear in mind that not everyone is in church has come for the same cause to worship God. Worship your God, pay attention to the word of God, but don't be deceived by the enemy. He's everywhere. The Bible says he's like he's a wolf dressed in sheep's garment. He knows how to say praise God. Some of them are hiding in ministry. They even go to Bible school. I'm telling you, in Bible school, you also find devil worshippers. Satan has his own Bible schools. And cleverly so. Just think about it. Because if he has his own Bible schools, he can teach you a twisted version of the scriptures to hide himself. Okay? So, so hmm. be very careful. Be very careful. I, I encourage all of you, don't have middlemen between you and God. Okay? Don't say, oh, so-and-so is my pa uh, so-and-so. So, like Paul called such people carnal. He said people are, have become very carnal. He says, one says, I am of Apollos. The other says, I am of Paul. Um, I am of Oedipo. I am of Copeland. Or I am of Hagi. Or I am of this one, that one. What do you mean? You, you're being carnal. There is one God and one Father of us all. And one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. In other words, there's not supposed to, you're not supposed to have any middleman. Nobody's supposed to be praying on your behalf. You pray directly to God in the name of Jesus. As soon as you start having middlemen, you're gone. Mm. Many Christians have a televangelist Christianity. Don't let televangelists teach you Christianity. You have to learn the word of God for yourself. You learn God's word by spending time with God. If you don't spend time with God, it's because you're not interested. And if you're not interested, that's why Jesus said, My sheep know and hear my voice. So you can hear when God is saying, Come, spend time with me. Because you know that's your father who's speaking to you. And surprisingly, these people that have sold their souls to the devil, they say, they mention it, you know, they, they even uh, speak about it, like uh, uh, the late radio, before he died, he said, I gave my soul and conquered, he sang, I met my enemies to scatter. He mentions the songs he has released from the time he gave his soul. Mm -hmm. He says, from Nakudata, Nakutamani, Zuena, Ruacho Numia. He's mentioning the songs he has released. From the time he sold his soul. You know, there are so many artists that have come out to say that they sold their souls to the devil. But it's like people don't even pay attention to what they have <clears throat> said. It's like they are bound, you know. Luke 21, 19, Jesus said, in your patience, possess ye your souls. So God knows you're going through things. But in your patience, Jesus is saying, possess your soul. Hold on to your mind, your will, and your emotions. Hold on to them. Pray. He just wait god will deliver you god they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall walk and not be weary they shall run and not faint that means that god will deliver you so just hold on faith is the ability to stand the test of time through the storm so you you hold on you refuse to give up you refuse to sell your soul like the like the ones who have sold their souls in hollywood and that's what satan wants he wants the whole world to sell their souls like the celebrities that's the new world order, order. Yeah. don't you get it the new world order is everybody selling their souls like the celebrities have sold their souls and the way everybody's going to be selling their soul is by taking the chip you take the chip and the, and once it goes into your hand or your forehead or your hairline wherever once it goes in that is penetration of the skin that's a blood covenant that's why i'm so glad she mentioned covenants because that's a blood covenant as soon as you take the mark you have received the mark of the beast. Don't take that thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, in fact, I need to I need to touch on Revelation chapter 13 because it talks about that mark of the beast. <clears throat> and this is what the Antichrist is coming to do. Okay, the Antichrist will be the figure whom the whole world is worshiping as if he's the Messiah. That's the Jewish 
That's the guy that the Jews in Israel are waiting for. They reject our Lord Jesus who came 2,000 years ago. They reject him. They have their own Messiah. That's why it's so dangerous to be worshiping Jews. Don't be worshiping Jews. Don't be worshiping people. All right? Look what the, the Antichrist is going to do. The one posing as if he's Jesus. The one coming as if he's the Lord Christ himself. Verse 16, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. That means nobody's going to be able to have transactions, to do transactions, financial transactions. That's economics. That is digital transactions. So the Bible 2,000 years ago foretells digital transactions. All right? This book is two-thirds prophecy. And that no man might buy or sell, save he who had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. For is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Now one score is twenty, so three score is sixty. So six hundred, three score and six is six, 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 which is the hexagram. Can you see the hexagram? Where do you see the hexagram? You see the hexagram on the flag of modern day Israel, which was formed by the house of Rothschild, the banking family, the Illuminati Luciferian banking family. It was not formed by God. That land over there, that's why it's, there's so much contention. Because when God gathers his people Israel, there will be peace. Yeah. All right? Yeah, and, uh, so. yeah, because of time, we may not be able to go through everything, but we have written books about whatever we are talking about. There Can you, you need to also talk about your, 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 your deliverance. because you. Yes, I'm going to talk about my deliverance, but you know I may end up forgetting. We have written a book. Uh, we have written books about whatever we are talking about. There is Erica, part one, seven years in hell. Erica, part two, 18 years with Lucifer. Uh, Erica, part three, witchcraft and spiritual warfare. And uh, the truth about money, they are all available on Amazon Kindle. And there are some people who may need to contact us for prayer or to also uh, for us to direct them to our church. Uh, the numbers are plus two five four seven one seven zero six two zero nine eight or plus two five four seven nine nine seven three three seven seven five plus two five four seven one seven zero six two zero nine eight or plus two five four seven nine nine seven three three seven seven five you can give them the email Yes, you can email us at info at lifeisspiritual.org. That's info, I-N-F-O, info at lifeisspiritual, spelled as one word, lifeisspiritual, at, uh, at lifeisspiritual.org, dot O-R-G. Oh, you can also follow us on Facebook, Erica Belinda Ministry, and... And Abraham Bamboo uh, on Facebook, or the... Uh, um, the real bamboo. So yes. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to uh, tell you how I got delivered. You know, I was prayed for my. I, I last in the last video I shared that uh, this prayer thing. You know, praying for me took a week before my soul came back into my body. But now after I had to, you know, I faced so many challenges. Like for three years, I could not visit. I could not go back to my home because I was. they were looking for me. They wanted to kill me. The devil worshippers, the people that I was working with wanted to kill me. So they, were, they knew my home and they were looking for me at home. So I had to hide in pastors' homes. I started staying with pastors. And then um, I would go to school. But even in schools, I would be attacked. Uh, you know, there are some devil agents in schools. So they would uh, come and attack me. So uh, also... Uh, I was fighting with covenants. I was trying to deal with covenants. I was trying to, to renew my mind with the word of God, learn how to live as a Christian. Uh, it was a, a very challenging experience. Now, what made me to totally will to serve God? Because I started where I was serving God, but I was dealing with habits. I was uh, dealing with uh, this habit of drinking alcohol, uh, drugs, smoking. I would sometimes 
uh, go somewhere when they, when I'm not being seen. You know, because deliverance, actually people who are going through deliverance need to be put in a deliverance rehabilitation center. Because there are so many things that, that they are dealing with that pe normal people can't understand. So I was uh, going, you know, going from that life where I would take alcohol, you know, at will, I would smoke, I was taking drugs. Now I was recovering from all that. And then also to, to start to live as a normal Christian, you know, uh, dress decently and all that, and to interact with people freely and to love people the way God requires us to love them, you know, and to trust people because in the the kingdom of darkness they we were being taught never to trust anyone it's like survival for the fittest mm -hmm. so i used to even when i got saved i would sleep with knives anyone who disappoints me because mm -hmm. that was the world it was survival for the fittest so if you disappointed me i would give you a good one and you know i would feel like i've not sinned because that is how i was trained you know in the kingdom of darkness so i had to be taught the word of God. And you know what helped me was uh, there was this program on, on a computer that, you know, the, the word of God would be played like constantly. And as I sat in, in that office and I would listen to the word, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, it, it, it deleted most of the evil programming that the enemy had put in me. So I started renewing my mind with the word of God, I would listen to the book of Psalms from the beginning to the end. And again, I would listen to it. So I began now to trust God. So when, when I would feel attacked or be, uh, I would be tormented before I would, I would go violent and beat people, I would jump out of cars, you know, because it would be beyond me. I didn't know how to fight. So the more I listened, he leads me beside still waters, you know, I, I learned that God is my protection. A pure heart trusts God. If you don't trust God, your heart is contaminated, okay? That's why when you sin, sin enters in and contaminates the heart and puts a distrust of God. That's why you try to talk to sinners about God. They don't want to hear. They okay? don't. Yeah, but if your heart is pure, you trust God. So I started now trusting God. If I would get attacked, you know, if spirits would come to attack me, I started now calling upon the name of the Lord. I would start now calling upon Jesus. So because in the kingdom of darkness, the first mission I was given, the first assignment I was given were to cause accidents. I think God wanted me to undo what I had been doing. So I started, uh, God would allow me to be in a place where there's going to be an accident. And I would, I would tell the pastors, let us start to pray. There's going to be an accident right now, a car accident right now. And there's a time I, I thought I was the only one who was seeing the angel of death. I asked pastor, do you see that man in a black, in a black garment? He said, yes. And what about the one in a white garment? They were standing on a certain hotel. And that hotel is owned by a devil worshiper. And I told them, you know, when you see the angel of death, you know that there's going to be an accident. Mm -hmm. So, and, and there's going to be bloodshed in our country. So please let us pray. So they thought I was mad. They were like, how can someone see an angel of death? I told them, okay, you may not believe in me, but at least let us pray and cancel any accident that is about to take place. So we prayed. And as we prayed, uh, there was a bike that was trying to overtake our vehicle and then there was a, a, a vehicle that was coming from the opposite end and we just had a big bang like boom and you know what happened because we had been praying this man the bike guy was lifted in a, in a slow motion and he fell on the bonnet and then the, a lady who was sitting behind on the bike was carried in a slow motion to the side of the road. And everyone was wondering how it had happened. And the, the men that I had showed the pastors disappeared. And when the men disappeared, the pastors now began to realize that I was talking about things that I really understand. So we, go, we went to church. And, but on our way to church, there were these guys who sell newspapers. As they were moving with the newspapers, I checked one newspaper. It was, uh, the headline was, be aware the angel of death is visiting the earth. And I was like, how did these people get to know that the angel of death is visiting the earth? Unless if they are also working for the kingdom of darkness. 
So these people who don't want to read the Bible, but they have time to buy and read all newspapers are in trouble because they are being programmed by the enemy and they don't know. They watch the 7 p.m. news, the 8 p.m. news, and all the news is bad news, but they don't have time to listen to the good news, to the word of God. Their lives are being programmed by the enemy, but they don't know. So we went, and then as we went to church, that day we had an overnight, and in that overnight, we prayed for a devil worshiper, and she got delivered, and she said that uh, that day there was going to be bloodshed, but there is a person who identified, and when she saw me, she said, you, you failed our mission. So she began to scream. She was very scared. We prayed for her. She got delivered. So now I continued. God started using me. I would go to places where there's going to be an accident. There's a place I was in Nakawa. And in Nakawa, there, there is a, a place where there is a company. And that company is owned by a devil worshiper. So uh, we were stuck in jam for some reason. And there were some, uh, some youth that were supporting a certain soccer group. They were, they were traveling to Jinja. They were going to, you know, to, to watch a soccer match. And on their way, I felt that, no, there's going to be an accident here. So one youth got out of the car. I started praying. And the, the, I was sitting in a public vehicle. So the neighbor, my neighbor began to feel uncomfortable. And he said, can you pray slowly? I told him, no. I cannot pray slowly because I feel there's going to be an accident. I, if, in fact, I also want you to join me in prayer right now. I was feeling that there's going to be an accident. So I continued to pray. And as I was praying, this boy got out of the car. He, he stood behind, you know, those matatus, the taxis. He stood behind and a lorry came at a terrible speed. And now for it to stop, it just landed on the boy. And the boy fainted. And they carried him. But when they carried him, he woke up again. And I was like, thank God he did not die. So I started, uh, God started using me to, to go to areas where there's going to be accidents. And I did that. I, I really felt in my heart that at least God is using me to undo what, what the enemy was causing me to do. So um, I, I now continued to, to preach, you know, to testify. I would go to schools and every school I would go to. People would get saved and get delivered. So right now, if I'm to count how many devil worshippers have been delivered through this ministry, I can't count. There are so many thousands, universities, schools, villages. Uh, I, I one time went to Nebi and the whole village got saved and the clubs were closed, you know. So we, we continued until when i met with my husband and we've still continued to serve god so if you feel you you're blessed with this ministry and you would love us to come and minister where you are you can still contact us on those numbers our work is to preach the gospel the bible says go into the world preach the gospel lay hands on the sick cast out devils mm -hmm. yeah so god bless you amen 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 and um if you've never received the lord jesus Man, we want to pray with you right now. This is no time mm. to be lukewarm. This is no time to be pray, playing with your life. Listen, the times we are headed towards are going to be more difficult to be a Christian. So if you cannot be saved now, leave alone in the future. If you cannot be saved now, if you can't live right now, times are going to get more difficult. It's going to be more and more difficult to be a Christian, to be saved, to be a disciple. It's going to become more difficult. Now, there is this doctrine going around that the rapture is going to take place before, the, before the, the tribulation begins, before they start killing Christians. Let me tell you, they're trying to tell you, they're trying to put a time timeline around when Jesus is going to come. Don't listen to those people. Nobody knows when the Lord Jesus is coming. Nobody knows exactly when he's coming. So if the tribulation begins and the Lord Jesus has not taken you, You'll start, people will start feeling like, hey, the Lord Jesus didn't take us and the tribulation has come. They start getting shaky in their faith. Don't listen to the Schofield Bible. Those Schofield and Darby Bibles, those were corrupted. They corrupted the interpretations of those scriptures, okay? So don't listen to people who claim to know when Jesus is coming back. No man knows the day nor the hour. 
nor the angels in heaven, nor the prophets, nor the apostles. Nobody knows, okay? So just be ready. Just be ready. That's why Jesus said, watch and pray. All right. That's what you do. You watch and pray. You don't try to, you don't try to, you don't try to say when uh the, the when the Lord is coming. You will you'll deceive people, you'll be deceived. And the and the Roman Catholic Church wants you to believe that there's going to be a a a rapture before all of the hell breaks loose. Why? So that you'll be shaken in your faith. You'll be like, oh, I thought Jesus was coming. I thought we were supposed to disappear. Now we're here. And then they're convincing you to take the mark, and your faith gets shaky. And you agree to take the mark. Whoa. Be careful. So if you've never received the Lord Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I have heard your word. I've heard your word. I know that Jesus came and died for my sins. I know that Jesus came and died for my sins. I pray that you forgive me of my sins. I pray that you forgive me of my sins. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess that he is Lord with my mouth. And I confess that he is Lord with my mouth. Make me a new creature. Make me a new creature. Write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of Blot life. Blot out my transgressions with the blood of Jesus. Blot out my transgressions with the blood of and Jesus. And make me a new creature. And make me a new creature. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you're born again, you're saved. Find a Bible-believing church where they preach the real word of God, Amen. not this watered-down uh, commercial Christianity that you see on television. Amen. All right, You need to find a real church where people are really saved, man. It's preferably a small church because you go to the mega churches, man. I'm telling you, God is not in those mega churches. He's in the small gatherings, okay? Small gatherings of Bible-believing people who really get into the word, Amen. get involved in Bible study, get involved in the word of God, Anything that is the Word of God, get involved. Read your Bible for yourself. Start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all right? We love you. God bless you. Amen. We out.